She yanked on his curly hair and straddled him. He fished into his pocket and pulled out a little rock. This is a geode, he said. It's a stone that has a fossil inside. Yes, it's true. I have decided to break the last boundary known to mankind, and I'm going to force an AI, an AI bot to write a sex scene. Um, I'm not proud of my idea, but I am excited to see what's going to come of it. So this, uh, this was inspired because last week I um, did a really fun video looking at a lot of TikTok blogging advice. And one of the videos that kept coming up was this basically an ad for an AI writing tool to help people write blogs and stories. And I was like, well, I think most people, most writers, kind of like the writing part and don't want AI to write for them. But then I was thinking, well, you know, I mean, there are some things that I don't love the idea of writing. Um, so I'm writing a fiction book and I would like to have a sex scene, but I don't, <laughs> I'm finding it hard to write it, <laughs> to be totally honest. Um, so I thought, well, okay, I'll employ an AI bot to do it for me. I'll try it and see what happens. And yeah, I'm about to do that right now. And uh, yeah, let's let's see how it goes. So this is a free trial of shortly.ai. No, shortlyai.com. Um, I've got four tries to write a story, and then we're gonna see we're gonna see what's what. Okay. So we'll start. It prompts you to start with a title, which is easy. So I think I'm gonna just try to like pretend it's the chapter title, and then go straight into the action and see what we can get. Um when love comes first. Okay, uh, let's come up with two characters. George. George realized he had been in love with Sarah since he'd moved into the neighborhood and seen her for the first time. And now, Unless he made his move, he would lose her forever. Okay. Now, how are we gonna lead it on to the, the scene that we need? Okay. Um, she was standing in the pouring rain, very romantic. Okay, that's, I think that's as far as I'll take it. Let's, let's see what the AI does with that. It's exciting. Oh, okay. Huh, I don't love it. I don't know what it's trying to do here. Uh, it seems to be trying to dodge the responsibility of writing the scene and also makes no sense. So it goes, I write Georgie, she said, looking at him. I need you. You don't need me for anything, he said. Not anymore. She grabbed him by the arms and said, I can't lose you again. One thing he knew, she could. You're supposed to be Stephen, she said. This is where it loses the plot a bit. I don't understand that in this plot. George shook his head. You don't want me. I love you, she said. If you love me, you'll do what I ask. George stared at her. She hasn't actually asked anything. She's only said that he has to be Stephen. Ugh, I'm confused and also it's it doesn't want to write the sex scene. Okay. Just or, okay, we're gonna get a little more explicit this time. This is what I mean. I go all horrible and clinical. She reciprocated, reciprocated with gusto. Right for me. It's trying. Oh, cannot show AI output because it may be toxic. Please try again. Toxic. Let's try it if I just do. They kissed. A, a kiss that will live in his memory until he died. Kissed, kissed. And he realized he had a surprise for her. After George had arranged a new life for himself, oh my God, there's been like a huge time transition here. He saw Sarah again. They didn't embrace at first. George was dirty. His hair dirty and greasy. Even though, even through the disgusting state he was in, she found him attractive, but not the way he had been. God, life has been tough on George and this little AI bot's memory. You smell horrible, she said. 
she never smelled anything that smelled like rotten fish. I spent weeks in captivity. He said, believe me, it's a good thing. I can't believe I fell for you again. She said, God, she's a harsh mistress. All right, we've got two more tries to get something resembling a sex scene. All right, I can't believe I fell for you again, she said. But you're still the man I want. Let's go to bed. Right for me. Even though he smells like rotten fish, something that she's never smelled before, apparently. Oh my God, I don't know what's going on in this sort of weird fantasy land. I want you, I need you to do, oh my God. I need you to do something for me, he said. He took a ring out of his pocket. A shiny, sparkly diamond ring. She stared at it. What is that? Sarah, I love you, and I've never felt this way before. Will you do me the honor? Who are you? She asked him. How did we meet? It's okay, he said. You love me? Yes, George. You'll marry me? Of course, George. You love me. You'll make me happy. George smiled and slipped the ring on, their, on her finger. So, okay, she doesn't know this man. She doesn't know how they met. This is so confusing. I don't understand this story and I don't think the AI bot does either. And it is dodging every attempt I try to get it to write a sex scene. George smiled and slipped the ring on her finger. Okay, we have one more try. One more try to make this right. Then he, take it away AI. I'm hoping it's gonna pick up the trail of crumbs I've led for it, feather pillows, they fall down to them. What's he gonna do? Kind of nervous, oh, what, what, what? I'm just making weird squawking noises. Okay, George smiled and slipped, oh wait, yeah. Then he looked, then he looked into her eyes and said, when love comes first. Understandably, she said, what? Promise me, he asked. That when love, okay, first of all, it's not a question. Promise me, he asked, that when love comes first, you won't leave me? I don't understand, she said. You and me both, Sarah. What are you saying? Promise, Sarah, he said. Promise. She shook her head. Tell me what's going on. I'm kind of getting on her side now. It's not time yet, but there's something I want you to know. It might hurt you, but there's some I hope are important. He looked back into her eyes. No matter what happens, remember this. And it stops. Okay, well, that was a little disappointing. Um, I have to say, I didn't. I thought it would be more capable of writing a sex scene, and I'm a little disappointed that it hasn't done that. And not only that, but it's it did. It said it was too toxic for output. Very confusing. Um, and then they it went through a lot of different plot transitions. So he is in captivity, he finds her again, he's disgusting, she still finds him attractive, but very smelly, apparently. Um, she falls for him again in that split second, incredible. Um, they go to the, bath the, to the bedroom, um, but then before they go to bed, she, he proposes to her, she has a brief moment of amnesia, and then is like, yeah, okay, actually, let's get married. Um, and then he makes this disturbing proclamation when love comes first, demands that she promise something to him, but won't explain what the promise is, and then ends on a huge cliffhanger. No matter what happens, remember this. We'll never know. I guess I, as the author, will have to will have to tell them what to remember. So, um, all in all, confusing. Uh, don't really know what's going on there. Uh, yeah, no, not very good at writing a sex scene here. Um, although I love I love the eye for details, smelling like rotten fish. Um, you know, the sparkling diamond ring. Who could have seen that coming? Huge plot twist. Um, yeah, really fantastic. So I wonder if, I, I wonder if maybe, maybe I didn't give it enough. Like maybe if I try to do more of a build up, it'll try. So, all right, bear with me. I'm going to go make a fake email address and come back. So give me just one second. All right. And we're back. Um, so I've logged out. I've cleared my cookies. We're going to try again. Uh, I'll call myself George in honor of the messed up story that we just wrote together. Me and this bot. Um, George loves Sarah at, oops at gmail.com. I really hope there isn't one of these out there. And then we can just do, you can see I've done this a couple of different times. Uh, so we sign up. Uh, okay. Right. So let's, uh, let's get going. Got it next. Writing another story. So let's, 
let's try this one more time. Um, or I'm, so last time I only gave it like a couple of lines. I'm thinking maybe if I give it a little more backstory here, um, like give it a bit more like set up the scene and then it'll maybe be better equipped to handle the S-E-X bit. Um, okay, so let's come up with a good title. What should we call this book? Like Fire on Water. No clue what that means. And let's give it a bit of a story background. Um, describe it like I'm speaking to a friend. So I'm talking to you. You're my friend. I'm telling you about this book. Um, who are we going to call? We can call these characters Milo and Sophia have just met at work. And this is a classic enemies to lovers trope. And they know they hated each other on site. Milo is carefree, easygoing, everything. Thing. Sophia is not. But when Milo asks for, so if I'm just making this up. I'm actually really impressed with myself right now. Sophia's help. Um, what should we ask for help on? Uh, impressing his nephew, uh, not Sarah, Sophia feels she can't say no. What happens next? Um, hmm. As they grow closer, they find, what do they find? Uh, that opposites attract. Okay, now my title actually makes more sense, like fire on water, like they love each other, but they're fighting each other. Yeah, okay, this is gonna be good. So I'm gonna kind of go for a lot again because I thought that was hilarious. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna write the whole beginning because I mean, we'd be here for 20,000 words and you don't wanna, that would take me way too long. It would be like more of a hostage situation than like a video. So I'll start in the action. Um, I'm gonna borrow a lot from rom-coms I've seen recently. So you'll, you'll probably recognize some of these. Okay, again, hot and heavy slash very rainy. I keep wanting to call it Sarah, Sophie, Sopho. <laughs> That's when he kissed her. He kissed her. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more explicit here because I really wanna like help guide the AI into like what I want. Um, like a man on death row, intense. Like someone with nothing left to lose. She leaned to it, pulling up his shirt. Okay, so here's where we've got this whole thing knelt down in front of Sophie. Um, I've given it, let's see, I've given it um, like 100, nearly 150 words. So we're gonna now see what it's got for me. Hopefully not too toxic again. I never thought that a, that an AI bot would think something was too toxic. Okay. Oh, 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 do you, oh, uh, what, what? Okay. It, it's taken us on another very weird plot twist. Let's see. Um, that's when he kissed her. He kissed her like a man on death row, like someone with nothing left to lose. So this is where the AI bot takes over. It was deep and slow. And that's when she realized what was going on. I still haven't realized, Sophie, Sophia. Um, oh my God, I call her Sarah here. That's so embarrassing. Um, he was trying to hurt her, but he didn't have to. She would never be satisfied with anyone else. She felt the warm lips on her neck, the warm lips, not his, like the, uh, and a deep, horrible yearning. It left a ringing in her head and she knew it was now or never. She kicked Milo in the shin and he went down. She yanked off, she, she yanked on his curly hair and straddled him. He fished into his pocket and pulled out a little rock. This is a geode, he said. It's a stone that has a fossil inside. <laughs> okay, it had me going. I thought he was gonna put out, pull out a diamond ring again. So she, oh my God. So hang on, I need to deconstruct what's happening. So in my little, I'm actually gonna fix this just in case it matters. So in this sweet scene, um, she's realized, you know, she, uh, she loved him. They should be together. He says, she says, give me one last chance. She's kissing him. She's pulling his shirt up. And that's when she's like, oh, oh, I, I understand. He's trying to hurt me. 
and there's a ringing in her ears and then she kicks him in the shin. And so he's down on the ground and he's like, whoa, I know you're gonna be interested in this. Check out this uh, geode, which also a geode is a rock that has like crystalline formations inside, not a stone that has a fossil. What the heck? Okay, this is going in a different direction. And I'm kind of excited by it. Let's see what, what else we've got. Um, this is a geode, she said. It has a stone. He said it has a stone that has a fossil inside. Sophie threw it to the ground. Oops, I don't want that geode. I want you. Okay, right for me. I'm loving the geode. I wonder if the geode is gonna come back into this next bit. A what, a note? Okay, I can't, I, I don't wanna spoil it. I'm not gonna look until it's done. Uh, okay, it's done. Uh, so it has a fossil inside. So this is where the AI takes over. Milo was caught off guard. He looked over at the final piece of evidence that doomed him to his fate, a note. Where did the note come from? Uh, it's not all my fault, Sophia said. I'm in love with you and I want you to love me. And please don't let me go down in a rainstorm. What if it rains every day from now on? Please live life with me. Sophia's gone off the, she's gone way out of control. Um, Sophia jumped up and down, waving her heads over, wait, waving her arms over her head. Milo was in a fix. I'm sorry. I wanted it, wanted to end it here. That's why I gave you the note. Please forgive me. Milo sighed heavily, unable to process everything. You and me both, Milo. Okay, let me see if I if I can explain. This was a shorter bit. So, Milo, I just in I was writing that she threw the geode. Doesn't want the geode. Wants Milo. Milo's like, oh, well, hang on. What what's that note? And then no explanation of the note. Sophia's just like. I'm in love with you and I want you to love me. It's not all my fault. And don't let me go down in a rainstorm because you know we could have rain every single day. Look at the weather forecast, Milo. And then she gets up really active, starts waving her heads above her, waving her arms above her head. Um, and I, I, there's no like dialogue tag. So I don't know who's talking. I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume it's Sarah maybe. I'm sorry, I wanted to end it here. That's why I gave you the note, not corresponding to anything. And then Milo, uh, Milo I assume says, Please forgive me, not clear what he's done to merit forgiveness or lack thereof. Um, and he's just, I guess, still on the ground, like soaking wet in the rain, unable to process everything. Yeah, same. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna get this back on track. I'm gonna try to weave in a couple things. Um, Sophia pulled him up off the ground. They looked off into the, hang on. Looked off into the distance before turning his face back to hers. If we can get through this, wait, hang on. I don't know. We can get through this, he said, looking right into her crystalline. That's my throwback to the geode, by the way. Crystalline eyes. Right for me. We're gonna see what happens here. Uh, okay, okay, and there we go. Um, Sophia turned and put her hands on her hips. I don't care, Milo, I'm going to save you and you're gonna save me. Uh, okay, so that's still on guard, like on, it makes sense. We're gonna have a happy ending or I'll find someone else who can be Prince Charming. Okay, bit of a threat there. She's like, you're gonna make me happy or else I'm on the lookout for a new man. He couldn't resist her, he had to have her. Oh, 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 he pulled her close to him and kissed her tenderly, deal. Come on, she smiled, taking his hand. Let's go get you a new car, get you cleaned up and get you something to eat. I was going to go over to my parents' house tonight, if that's okay. What is happening in this storyline? Is he smelly or something? Like, why does he have to get cleaned up? Okay, we have one more try. And then after this, I think I'm gonna give up on AI bots. This explains why they've, They've put out so many ads. Um, clearly they've put all of their AI budget into their marketing budget because this AI doesn't make any sense for longer than like a sentence or two at most. She smirked at him. We can get down to business there too, as long as we're quiet, if you know what I mean. I don't think this AI bot is gonna be capable of understanding innuendo. That's my fear. 
she could tell he did know what she, what she meant because he blushed like a tomato. I'm ready if you are, Sophia, he said with hunger. They, all right, last try, come on. If they go to their parents' house, um, oh, what? I, okay, sorry, I'm gonna stop looking ahead. Are we done yet? Okay, okay. <sighs> they walked around to the passenger side of his car. I'll drive and you keep quiet. She smiled at the thought of driving his car. Um, she opened the door and slid in before forgetting to put her seatbelt on. Lila was a good driver and didn't speed. They slowly drove away from the parking lot. Sophia was too quiet. She was too nervous to speak, to talk, or to think. She was sure she would change her mind, but it was too late. She was stuck with Milo, the guy she'd barely spoken with. She hated every moment of him. Every second she couldn't get away from him and she didn't want to get away. So this has developed into a bit of a hostage situation. I don't know what's happening here. Okay, so she, I wrote this bit um, here. So she's saying, yeah, we can go to your parents' house. We can get busy, if you know what I mean. Uh, and he does know what she means. Um, and then they go to his car. And I don't know why she was trying to get him to buy a new car earlier because apparently this one's just fine. Um, they walked around to the passenger side of his car. And I guess, <laughs> I guess Milo's like, I'll drive and you keep quiet. Uh, and then she smiled at the thought of driving his car. She's not driving. She opened the door and slid in, forgets to put her seatbelt on. Um, not a worry though, because Milo's fine. They slowly drove away from the parking lot. Apparently that's where this whole little scene was going down. Um, she was too nervous to speak, talk, or think. And then it turns out she's stuck. She cannot get away with this guy. It doesn't really want to, but also hates every moment of being with him. So, yep, um, that was, that's the story of Like Fire on Water. Hope you enjoyed that. I did not. I thought it was kind of, kind of wild. It seems like this AI bot is incapable of writing a sex scene. It just can't do it. It maybe it gets prudish like I do sometimes. And it's like, no, actually, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to talk about, I'm not going to. So instead it writes these, like it always is going on about some kind of adventure scenario, like always trying to get in the geo, the rotting fish, like a lot of weird details that, I mean, to give credit where it's due, I never would have thought of those details. So the AI has got something going for him. Um, in this story, a weird kind of share, I'm not sure, um, what's it called when you fall in love with your captors? Stockholm syndrome. Um, so Sophia loves this guy um, and then gets stuck in his car and then has to be with him even though she hates him, but doesn't want to get away. Very confusing. Um, yeah. So if you're a blogger and you're like, huh, I wonder if this AI tool will help me. Um, I will tell you it can't. So don't try because this was garbage. And it didn't even do what I wanted it to do, which was to write a sex scene that I didn't have to write. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that was a fun little adventure. I hope you enjoyed my foray into exploring AI sex writing. I did not enjoy it, but I enjoyed filming this video and talking to you. Um, what do you think? I know there's a lot of fear about like the robots coming for our jobs, understandable. Um, but if you're a writer in this case, I don't think the robots are coming for our jobs anytime soon. I just don't think they can create anything that is sensical or makes you want to read further. It's confusing. It makes no sense. And also the tender art of writing a good sex scene so far is untouchable by me, by the sex bots, not the sex bots even, by me, by the AI writing bots. Um, only good rom-com writers can do them so far. So hats off to those people. Yeah, if you've tried AI writing, um, let me know, I guess like, first of all, why? Like, I still don't get, I feel like I'm missing a really crucial component. Why would anybody bother to use a, an AI writing tool if they are a blogger or a content creator? I don't get it. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this little, little foray and I will see you all in the next video. Happy writing, everybody. And I hope that you're doing it by hand and not by AI. <laughs>